Hello, welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day no matter what it is that you're doing. Following on from last week's Art Deco earrings projects that we looked at together, this week I've been entirely inspired by a slightly different, slightly later movement of the arts, which is Art Nouveau. Very, very much inspired with uh, Rennie Mackintosh in mind, and bizarrely my nan's wallpaper from her house, which I think probably the wallpaper went up in the 1970s. Beautiful intertwining flowers and ladies. Absolutely gorgeous. I wish I had a photograph of it to share with you. So this is the project that we're going to look at today. It's kind of a little bit tulipy, and I'll show you that on the board in just a second. But obviously you can see that there are some references and nods to Rennie Mackintosh, who in terms of jewellery is a, a huge inspiration for many. So let's pop down to the board and we'll have a closer look at the project, and then we'll learn to create that together. So this is the piece that we're going to create together today. I'm working with round copper wire in one millimeter or 18 gauge, 0.8 millimeter or 20 gauge, and 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge wires. I'm using a really lovely silver plated copper round wire for all of these pieces. I've also added in from the orange cream dream a crystal colours collection from Jesse James Beads, a couple of really beautiful, uh, well, very orange, obviously, <laughs> bicone beads. Now, you could use your Swarovski, you could use your Czech. It's entirely up to you. I've actually got a little project sample later on to show you what it looks like with round faceted beads as well. But I think it looks beautiful with bicones. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating with for you today. So there are four main parts to the project, and I'm just going to slide those in now to give you an idea of what we're going to look to create. We've got this design, which is very classically Art Nouveau inspired. It's two tulips growing away. Again, you can still feel that slightly Egyptian influence, but it's a little softer. We've also got these sections here, which are again floral inspired. And in this piece, I've used round faceted, but I will be demonstrating again with some bicones because I think they look beautiful. If you want to use round beads, you can still create the essence of that diamond shape, just using the wire to surround it. The next part that we're going to look at is the overall, it's almost like a festive bauble. It's the frame of the design. Now in this piece, there's just a single flower coming away from the neck. And in this piece, I had just a tiny bit spare. So I made a second floral design. And then underneath, we've got this, which is another pair of almost a snake's head design or tulip designs and what we're going to do is learn how to create each of those individually and then how to put them all together so that you get your Art Nouveau inspired decor. Now this is quite large so this would probably be beautiful as a wall hanging or something in the garden. However you can size this down to make perfectly beautiful jewellery. You would probably want to size the wire down ever so slightly also. But what I'm going to do is just move these out of the way for the time being and we'll work on this one step at a time. So to begin with, we're going to work to create this section, which is the double headed tulip. And for this, I'm going to be using approximately 10 inches of that one millimeter gauge wire. That's 18 gauge wire, silver plated round in this instance. Now this is far more than I need. It, you could probably get away with using around about six or seven inches. But what I want to do is to be able to show you quite a large piece so that you can bring the design together without struggling to see what's happening. So the first thing that I want to do is work out what kind of distance I want in the centre of the piece. Let me just drop that in for a second. So this is just less than an inch. It's about three quarters of an inch across. So you can size that up or size that down, whatever makes you happy. So I do need to find the centre of my length of wire. This is oversized again, as I say. And what I'm going to do is put two very sharp bends right there in the middle and just cross those wires over. So just going to go for around about an inch, I think, just to show you in an oversized fashion, just need to pull that across. And then each of those bends, I'm going to draw out using my thumb and the heat of my body to just warm that wire through. I'm going to flick that over because it's easier for me to demonstrate in this fashion. So again, I'm just gently adding some heat and using my thumb to create that curvature. 
I would like them to be a little bit like the stem of a wine glass. As I say, this is very, very much oversized so you can see what's going on. This is probably made with a six inch length of wire for a wall decor wall art piece and you can make that even smaller if you're going to turn that directly into jewellery. So what I want to do to begin with is put a little bit of delicate curvature at the bottom. If this was a wine glass it would be a bit rubbish because it wouldn't stand up. But I want to have a very gentle arc going on here and that enables me to judge how much curvature I want in the stem part. We're not making a wine glass charm today, but you absolutely could follow that up and make another wine glass. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop this out of the way so I don't twang it on the floor and just draw those out so that they're vaguely symmetrical. So to make this kind of tulip design, I'm going to come from underneath with my bent chain nose pliers and pull a quite a sharp angle to begin with, pulling that back on itself before utilizing my finger in this instance, the wire is going to flip around so you might want to support that just to create another beautiful fluid shape and I'm imagining this is a little bit like the head of a tulip that's yet to fully unfurl. So I've got that first swoosh in position and what I'm going to do here is just put a little bit of an angle on the end there before popping in with those pliers again and drawing that wire back on itself. I want to reflect that small angle, so I'm just going to close that up slightly, draw the wire out, pop my pliers down for a second, and then use my other hand, your thumb or your finger, whichever you prefer, just to draw that wire back and across. So I'm creating almost a little bit like a tulip or a snake's head. So what I want to do now is wrap this tail of wire around where we made that first angle. Now you will find that bits get in the way of one another, but to make sure that we hold that shape in position, what I'm going to do is grip very firmly with any flat facing pliers, the form that we've created. And I just want to push the wire so that it goes all the way around. Now for me to show you that, I'm going to replace the pliers with my thumb and forefinger and just take that tail all the way around and over so it encircles at least one time around that section that we created. So to create the almost snake's head style that we have showing here, I'm going to draw the wire back across almost in the direction it comes from, but I'm going to press down with thumb and forefinger to grip that and draw the wire so that it loops around and makes this really sultry swooshing shape. Again, pressing really firmly with my non-dominant hand, it's now almost like an S shape going across the face of our tulip design. Once I've decided that that's approximately where I want it to be, what I'm going to do is just trim away an excess of the wire. There's about an inch remaining. So we would still have used around about eight inches to create this size of design and possibly six or seven inches to create this size. So I'll pop that back out of the way. Now what I've done here is I've left a good maybe four to five millimetres, less than a quarter of an inch. I'm going to flip the design over so we're currently looking at the back and what I want to do is draw that little tail of wire up and then try to get it to sit inside the gap at the back of the design. If that twists you can just straighten that up slightly and then we're going to draw that over so small movements are best. Draw that over the back and then give that a squeeze so the tail sits down in the gap against the back of the wire that it comes from. So it's just looped around the end. You'll repeat that on the other side to try and give yourself an element of symmetry. It doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical, showing you the back for some reason there. So that's what we're going to be working with today. Just repeat on the opposite side. So that's our first small section and that's the one that I like to start with because it enables me to judge how large an arc, which means we can look at how large the whole design is going to be. So the next section that we're going to make is the double ended diamond shapes and these are going to fit underneath that little arc that we made at the base of that double tulip design. So for this section, I'm going to use a length of slightly lighter gauge wire. It's going to be 0.8 millimeter gauge. And I'm working with around about 10 inches or so here, which again is far too much, but it will enable me to show you how much we can work with. 
So if I pop the double tulip out of the way for a moment, what we're going to look at is recreating this. Now one of the reasons I chose to use a slightly lighter gauge wire here is that it will be kinder to the crystals or the beads that we're going to use. Whatever the bead hole is like in your chosen beads, for me, I could only get the 0.8 or 20 gauge through these particular pieces. So what I'm going to do is have a look at how much space I want to take up in the centre. I probably bring back in my first piece, make sure that that arc is kind of lining up to the same kind of size, and just gently curve the wire up and around so I can see what it is I'm looking at. So. You just need to refer each of those individual pieces back now and again. So what I'm going to do is take my first crystal and slide that down on the one side and I've got a really good sort of three inches or so over the edge here. Now if I pop that one out of the way for a moment, just leave that little bit showing in the corner. What we're going to do is be very respectful of the beads. All beads need to be treated beautifully. What we don't want to do is shatter them. So what I'm going to do here is it, I've got about three, maybe just slightly more than three inches of wire on the tail just here. What I'm going to do is put a very, very sharp angle coming back down to replicate the top and side of that first diamond. So I, you can see that the bead has escaped and that's perfect. I don't want the bead here for just a second. What I'm going to do is make sure that I'm super happy with that form and give that a little bit of strengthening. Now the reason I'm doing that is because what can happen when you start to turn the wire around the bead is that the central core will go squishy over to one side and we don't want that, we want to keep a nice smooth line in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is very gently open that out slightly. I'm going to push the bead into the position which is up at the top of that bend and I'm going to make sure that my pliers sit just outside where the bicone is causing that diamond shape. What I need to do then is draw the wire back across and underneath the bead. So again, I need to be respectful of the bead and not get any pressures on that. And I'm just going to refine that shape slightly and very, very gently push that into position. Pushing that over so that it nestles up against the bead but doesn't put any pressure on it. What I'm going to do now is show you with the pliers over the top because it's easier to demonstrate the technique, slightly obscures your view but you'll be able to see what's happening. So the 0.8 or 20 gauge wire is coming over the top of its own core. What I need to do is push that back to replicate the third side of the diamond shape that we're making. Now this will trap the bead. If you were to lift the wire up, the bead could slide on down, but we're looking to have that in position. And if you give a very, very gentle squeeze, what will happen is you'll firm up each of those corners that you're creating, and then you'll find that that wire doesn't really move around overly much. So if I draw this around to the side, and I'm just going to pinch that bottom of the diamond, pop those pliers underneath, and make that last bend in the diamond shape. Now that's gone a little bit soft, so what I'm going to do is very, very gently open that out. I'd quite like to have firm joints here. They're not technically joints, so I'm just going to refine that bend ever so slightly so that it sits how I want it to, and it gives quite a nice angular shape. So at this stage, I've still got a good two and a bit inches of wire remaining. Now that's more than I need, so what I'm going to do is trim away to around about an inch and a quarter, popping the tails in that scrap pot as always. So a really nice idea at this stage is to make the other side. So you would bring your double tulip into position so that you've got an idea of what kind of size you want to work with. If we just borrow the rear side of the design, what I would be looking for, you can have the uh, diamond shape to be at the side of the tulip, just above the tulip, just above below the tulip, but what we're looking to do now is to make sure that we have a symmetry in the piece that we're creating. So what I do is I drop my bead in on the second side and start creating those angles so that these sit equal and opposite to each other and they fit where I want them to fit with the double tulip design. Once I've got the diamond position on both sides, then I will make sure that this level of trim has taken place on both sides. So what you would need to do is set your diamond shape up, pop the bead in, 
do the little diamond around your bicone or whatever bead you're choosing to use once you've trimmed on one side and again this is around about an inch and a little bit an inch and a quarter maybe make sure that you trim exactly the same on both sides so what you would do then is coil up the end so that it becomes an extra kind of rosebud over the top of that little diamond shape so I'm going to draw that around into a coil with the round nose pliers to begin with and then I'm going to pop in with those flat facing pliers these are my favorite bent chain nose pliers I've had them a very long time and just little by little make a really neat tight coil and the slower you do this the neater and tighter your coil will be so what I can do is just take a second to make sure that I'm happy that this is all on the same plane give that coil a nice hearty squash with any flat facing pliers so because what we will have done is set our bead created the second diamond made sure that both of those tails are the same length what you'll end up with is two coils that are the same length so if I take these two pieces out of the way for the moment and drop in my prepared staged demonstration this is where you should be at now so for the next segment of our demonstration I'm going to create the overall frame which encircles the two diamond shapes and that double tulip design so for this we're going to again use one millimeter or 18 gauge wire to create a nice firm frame you can absolutely take that to a slightly heavier gauge 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge would be ideal so I have here approximately 15 inches of one millimeter or 18 gauge wire you can use a heavier gauge wire if you like and what I want to do is make sure that that's nice and straight there are no kinks or damages to the wire I'm just going to smooth that a couple of times between thumb and forefinger now I happen to have a round frame to hand it doesn't look like it's going to be large enough but the beauty of wire is that it can spring out for you if you need it to so I'm finding the center of my section of wire which as I say is around about 15 inches or so and I'm going to create a circular form in that very central segment so if I draw that all the way around and just make sure that that's pressed into the block you can use any round solid object that you have a hand lotion or whatever it is that you have to hand and then what I will do is remove the block and you'll see that that immediately springs out larger anyway so what we'll find is that with a little bit of teasing this will be the perfect size anyway so that looks actually almost perfect to be fair it's just sprung out to the right kind of size for me so I'm going to pop these up to one side now we are in the center of our wire so we've got relatively equal lengths of wire on either end and that's so that we can play around with the design at the top so I'm going to find that 12 o'clock position and push an upright into the frame that we're creating and what I might do a couple of times whilst I'm making something like this is just ensure that I don't shrink it down and that it will still fit the design that I want to use it for so what we're going to do now is a glorified wrapped loop so I need to hold on to the long tail that hasn't been turned up and what I'm going to do is turn that back on itself and wrap that around the upright that we made this is obviously much easier when you don't have a camera just above so I'm going to give that a very very gentle nip in a little bit larger than I'd anticipated but that will still work really nicely so now it's just a case of pinching very firmly and drawing the tail of wire around the upright I can afford to allow that to eat a little bit of the size of the circle if I want to because it is slightly oversized what I do want though is to keep those coils nice and neat and tidy so I'm going to draw that tail all the way around and you can use this to create as many coils as you want you could go for just enough to hold it together or you could make that super decorative and you can pick whichever side makes you happiest in terms of neatness so I'm going to set that at I think three coils looks good again just check in to make sure yes that does still fit my design and I've got a lovely long tail of wire now the one that's coming over to the side I will use to make a tulip in exactly the same way that we did the double headed tulip here so you can refer back to this section of the demonstration I don't want to be boring you today so we'd make a little tulip on this side and then a wrapped loop up at the top and I will run through that very quickly 
So if I hold the pliers across the design and push the tail of wire that's coming out at the top at a right angle, I need to flip it this way instead. So that's coming forwards from the design. I'm now going to grab hold of my bail making pliers to make a nice circular form. You can decide what kind of size you want. If you're going to put a tiny ribbon through it, you can really be quite small about it. But if you're going to wear it as jewellery, I tend to use oversized bales because it means that what I can do is let's just run that all the way around the form. So I need to flip this up the other way again because it is uh, the tail of wire is coming over to the right. So you can see we've made that round shape. I'm just going to make sure that that's straight up and then take the tail all the way around that neck. And again, you've got plenty of wire here to play with to make a second tulip if you so desire. So if I just bring in the example piece, what I've done is I've added some extra coils at the top, so just continue to wrap with one of these, whichever one makes you happy. You can have the same number on either side if you like. You could even have dropped a little bead in there if it makes you happy. I made a small tulip without a central divider on the upper one because I ran out of wire. That's why there's plenty more on this design. And on the lower one, I created a tulip in exactly the same way as the first demonstration. So what I'm going to do is now pop this out of the way and we've got our three stages done so far. So I'm just going to leave those up in the top there for now. And then what we're going to do is have a look at creating this section down here. So if I show you on the demonstration piece, that's what that looks like. It could be two simple snake's head designs, or it could be slightly more elaborate, and it could be in these kind of divided tulip designs. I'm going to show you this one very briefly, just on the one side as a refresher, and also how to size that up to the piece we're working with on the board. So you only need around about 10 inches of that 18 gauge one millimeter round, I'm using silver plated copper wire. So again, it's a very, very easy technique. The idea here is if you're looking to not waste too much wire, get that sized up, decide how far apart at the bottom you want those to appear. So with this design, they're quite close. And if I show you this as a staged demo, they're a little bit further apart. So you can obviously change that up completely how you wish to make it look. What you do need to do to save on wire is make sure that you have a central section and have at least the same amount of wire on either end so that you can work with a, a similar shape. So if I pop the pliers in on the one side and just draw that down at an angle, what I would need to do, whoops a daisy that went on a little bit of a journey, is measure this section and ensure that the bend occurs at the same distance from the other end. So I'm just going to go by eye. You can absolutely use a piece of scrap wire, or you can use a thread, or you could even use one of those funny tape measure thingies. So I'm going to just pop a little bit of curvature into the design so that it sits underneath the circular frame that we've just created. And I'll just refresh you on that tulip shape. So I'm going to add some heat into that wire just to get a nice fluidity to it. When I get to the end of my imaginary tulip, I'm going to put a little bit of an angle, draw that wire back round on itself, switch those pliers over so I can get a little bit of an angle on the other side, and then again, with the warmth of my hands and the shape of my thumb or my finger, if you can hear the scraping on the board, I'm very sorry about that, it's just that wire likes to be heard. So I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with that shape, grip very, very firmly, draw that wire underneath at least one time back in the same direction and I've got just enough wire here so if we look that length is probably about two and a quarter inches or so and what I'm going to do is pinch that joint that we just created in the center and then create that double kind of s-shaped swoosh now you, what you'll see with my designs is that sometimes I allow the wire to come over the top and outside that tulip design, which in reality you wouldn't have that because the petals would all exist within the outside frame. But as a design, I really like that. I think it adds a, a third dimension to your work. So I'm flipping over to the underside and again I'm going to trim to around about four to five millimetres, that is under a quarter of an inch and I'm going to turn that end all the way back 
and just very very slowly make that sit where I want it to sit so I'm going to push that in the frame at the rear before flipping that over so you can see that we have our stylized tulip and you can slightly edit the shape of the double tulip design if you want to so exactly the same in mirror image on the other side and then you've got your four pieces to work with so for the last stretch of today's tutorial I'm just going to show you how to tie them together now fully honest with you I made this piece about nine times before I settled on a technique which I think is really accessible and easy. I tried a couple of different ways to do really fancy weaving and it became too much of a handful to hold on to for people who are newer to wire work and honestly it made me a little bit sad once or twice too. So I've settled on this technique which is a two stage weave but it works beautifully and is accessible to people who are newer to wire work. So I hope that you will be able to enjoy this as much as I do. So I've just gently assembled our pieces and I'll show you the demonstration piece just here. And what can happen when you're putting all this together is that sliding occurs in the wire. Now this is reasonably centralised but what can happen if you're not pinching quite tight enough is that one piece will go one way, one piece will go the other way and you'll end up with something that's a little bit more surrealist than it is Art Nouveau. So you do need to try and pinch these pieces together which is why I've set this into a two part project. So the first thing that we're going to do is join the double tulip to the double diamond. If I pop this back up and out of the way and the other part of the demo over here we're going to work with around about 18 inches of that 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge round silver plated copper wire. So I'm working with um, as I say around 18 inches and that should be enough for both parts of the project. So to begin with what I would like to do is wind on my wire just to the right of the centre of the diamond section. Now let me just grab that tail out of the way so it doesn't flick up into the camera. So what I'm going to do is take about an inch past the end of the finer gauge wire and just wrap that to the right of the centre of the double diamond section. Now you can choose what frequency you want to do your wraps at but I'm going to go for three wraps around that double diamond section and I'm going to trim away that little excess at the bottom. Now you can work really hard to reduce your wastage, especially if you're working in precious metals, uh, by taking the very, very end of the wire all the way around. What I'm doing today is trying to make things slightly easier. We're working in a copper wire so it's super affordable. What can happen, because this is the lighter gauge wire, this is the 0.8 millimeter. is it's very easy to bend it out of shape. So what we're going to do is just be very mindful that we're not going to give this too hard of a squish. So I'm just going to give that a very gentle little nibble with those flat facing pliers. So I'm going to flip that on its side and introduce in the bit that sits above it which is the double tulip. Now the reason I'm doing this in two stages is because if you don't what can happen is that will go up on the side and it just doesn't have quite the same aesthetic. So I'm going to scooch that little triple wrap all the way down and I'm going to turn it upside down and pinch that really really firmly with my non-dominant hand holding together the lighter gauge with the double diamonds and that tulip section and I want that little triple weave to sit just at the edge of the central section of that double tulip. What I'm going to do now is wrap three times around both of those pieces of wire but what I need to do is not push them too hard together because I will want to wrap singularly around the double diamond again in just a second. So the first wrap is usually the trickiest. Once you've got one in there you can just allow that second circle to come around and then the third circle to come around again and you will probably want to just push that together to make it super neat and tidy. What can happen is that you pull this too close together. What will happen there is that you will squish the finer gauge wire slightly out of shape and also you will find it's too tight to take that length of the thin wire now down between those two segments and wrap individually around the double diamond section. 
So you might need to just give that a bit of a squish and what you can see at the moment is that's still quite mobile which is good because we want to ensure that things sit in position. So I'm going to go for three wraps around just the double diamond section. What you'll find with your lighter gauge wire like this very naughty 0.4 is that it wants to spring all over the shop. It's a little bit like that so you may need to just scooch that up ever so slightly again being at pains to not deform any of the sections that you've created. If you've got larger bicones, these are just some rounds that I found to replicate the idea of a diamond without actually having a bicone in hand. So again, I'm going to now wrap three times around both of them. That's opening up because it's tightened up towards the one side. And what we can do is just make sure that that sits neatly. So that's two and three, three wraps around the both and then take the tail of wire down. So we're wrapping now just around one and two and three, three times around just that double diamond segment. So I'm going to pull that firmly into position and then whiz on through. So we're alternating between three wraps around both of them and then one wrap around just the lower of the two in the completed design the double diamond is underneath the double tulip section. So when I refer to it as the lower, that's what I mean. It's very obviously above right now. So as you're moving through, what can happen is that things will come ever so slightly out of shape. So as you're checking your weaving is neat, you can also be checking that it is still centralized. Give that a squish, make sure that's nice and neat and tidy and that you're happy with how that's lining up. What you can do if things go slightly awry is just slightly cheat and you can hide an imperfection by changing the point at which your tulip looks. So I've gone three times around just the double diamond, so I now need to go three times around both of them again. And we're going to continue that same pattern until we get to the end of that lower portion of the double tulip. So if you find that your coils are getting a little bit uh, untidy, we can just scooch those along until they fit neatly together. So that's one and two and three, one and two and three. And I think probably we can get one more set of three on the both of them before finishing off with three on just the double diamond. So I'll just complete this because we're here together. We might as well get that done. One and two and three. And again, you'll take a second just to tidy that up before finishing off with three wraps around just the double diamond. Now it can be uh, quite tempting to be quite firm with your wrapping here, but you need to be aware that if you are using that lighter gauge wire, that you can very easily squash that away. Now we'll be using the other half of our finer wire in just a second. You could use two shorter lengths if you want to, but I would hate for you to be caught short on that wire. So I just need to make sure that that end is nice and tidy and that I am indeed happy with how that all looks. I'm actually reasonably pleased with that symmetry. Obviously, when you're working on that under your own steam without a camera and lights in the way, you can ensure that that meets your own strict approval levels. Once you are happy that all of that weaving is neat and tidy, there's just a little bit sticking up there. We're going to make that neat and tidy as well. And again, you can play around with these if you need to, but once you're happy that they're how you want them to be, you can set that weaving by gently squishing those woven sections. Now, you obviously hear me say quite a lot, never press two pieces of wire together, but I want this to be neat and tidy. And I am pressing really very gently. And what we're doing is we're just slightly squaring out the weaving to make sure that it sits tidily and that you're pleased with that for years to come. For the last stage of our demonstration, we're going to add the lower two sections, which is the circular form and the double snake's head or double tulip design to the section that we've just created. So although it looks a little bit complicated weaving wise, I've kind of broken it down to be just a little bit more accessible. So for the next stage of the demonstration, we're just going to join everything together as you see here. So I'm going to pop this one out of the way for now, but that's what we're looking to achieve. 
we're going to take a closer look at the pieces that we want to work with. Now for the simple sake what we're going to do is cast on at one end or start weaving on at one side so if I remove the lower tulip bar like so what we're going to look at is instead of starting on the double diamond again which is the lighter gauge of wire what we're going to look at is make sure that we're happy with its position obviously if you take it too much around to one side it just looks a bit unusual <laughs> so I would take pains to centralize that imagining a straight line coming from the 12 o'clock to the 6 o'clock I'd get that super lined up and then I would make sure that I'm winding around the frame wire instead of that uh, lighter gauge wire again so I'm pinching the position where I need to wind on and again I'm going to be slightly wasteful that just squeed all the way across the desk and I'm just going to do three little wraps and then cut the tail away at the back you can obviously be more thrifty at home but in saving a little bit of time we're just going to take that end off tidy the tail away make sure that that sits in position and then we're going to start bringing our design together and you will do this on both sides but I'm just going to show you on the one side so you can see there's a little bit of wire sticking up just here which would be difficult to smooth out later so this is one of those things that it's actually quite cool to see even though it's a pain and it slows the tutorial down if you have got a little bit sticking up you can just chase that away like so so now that's nice and smooth and we're going to do this in two separate stages. We're going to align the middle section with the double tulip and the double diamond, scooch that little triple wrap into position, and then we're going to wrap three times around the double diamond section and the frame section. So what I'm going to do is push that leading edge up and through, and you'll find this ever so slightly easier once you get going with the weave so that's obviously quite mobile at the moment so what I'm going to do is wrap three times around the both of them again not crushing them too hard together because then you'll find it difficult to get between those wires later so that was a little bit tight so I'm just going backwards ever so slightly loosening that up and then wrapping for a third time trying to make sure that they do not cross over neaten those up and push that into position now this is the time that it's most likely that things will go off center and you'll end up with that slightly more surrealist design so you will need to keep reassessing that for just a couple of minutes make sure that's centralized before we bring the tail of the wire up between the double diamond and the frame so you can see that's coming up in between pull that over the top get that nice and neat and tidy and what we're going to do then is add in the segment at the bottom which is the double tulip head or snake's head so I'm going to let that sit underneath and again I would say this is the time when things start to slide sideways and you'll end up with it ever so slightly out of alignment so just take an extra couple of minutes to make sure that you're happy if you need to make any slight modifications to the shape now's the time and then what we're going to do is wrap around the frame and that lowest section the double tulip on the outside so pushing the tail up drawing that section through and we're going to wrap three times around both of those being the frame and the lowest double snake head so three times around there push that wire up into position and then the wire comes all the way around underneath up and over the top of the double diamond and what we would do then is wrap three times around the double diamond and the frame alternating then to three times around the frame and the outside tulip and you don't need to do it too many times I'm going to show you the finished piece like so we just continue along and for this one I have gone for four sets so wraps around the double diamond and the frame and then wraps around the frame and the outer tulips and then I've alternated that back and forth three times around both ending as I started with three wraps around the frame wire 
So I hope that you've enjoyed our Art Nouveau inspired design today. You can absolutely size that down for jewellery, size it up for wall art, do exactly what you want. You can add many, many more layers if you like. But I think I've uh, tried to make this one as accessible as I can for beginners to wire work and I hope that you enjoy it. It's been my pleasure to be with you. I'm Gem Hawks. Uh, if you like the video, drop it a like. If you like the content, give us a subscribe and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.